Hey guys, today I'm going to show you a classical chess game that I've recently played over the board against a Soviet candidate master, Sergei Solomatin, who lives in Kazakhstan. This was played in a recent classical tournament in Almaty, Kazakhstan. And this was a crazy game. Sergei, I've studied some of his games before the, the game that we played. Uh, he's a crazy attacking player. He plays in the style of Mikhail Tal, sacrificing pieces, pawns left and right. And uh, you will see that in the game he tried to just uh, brute force mate me <laughs> on the spot, uh, not even waiting for the opening stage to finish. This was really interesting. Um, the engine uh, has not approved some of his moves, and at the board, while sitting, I realized that his move is incorrect. It must be wrong, but uh, it was very difficult to find the refutation, and there was a crazy game full of uh, mutual sacrifices. The ending was really unexpected. Do stay tuned until the ending, because you will be surprised what happened at the end uh, with mutual time trouble. So let's dive into the game. I'm playing the white pieces, and I play one e4, and he surprised me at uh, the first move. He played the French defense, which uh, according to the da database of uh, games played, he doesn't play. I was preparing for something else. So I decided to, uh, in my turn, surprise him, and I played the rare move b3. This is a gambit line. It's called uh, Harvitz attack. The idea is that after d5, bishop b2, if he takes, I go knight c3, he goes knight f6, and I just go queen e2. And it turns out that this pawn cannot be protected efficiently, and uh, what usually happens here is uh, black tries to develop, I take, and after some uh, preliminary preparations, I cast alone, and we have a very exciting game with uh, black castling short and white castling long, and uh, I will launch an attack here by going h5, g5, g5, f4, a5, and he will go a5, a4, a3. This is uh, an interesting position. Do study it if you want to, to get an interesting uh, attack against the French defense, but he did not go for this. He suspected that something was uh, was off. Obviously, he didn't know this move b3 because Soviet candidate masters, <laughs> they know the classical theory, but they usually don't know modern theory. And this is a move that, that uh, hasn't been played uh, a lot in the days of his youth. He's, I think, 60-something years old, something like that. So uh, he responded by knight f6, also an okay move. I go e5, attacking his knight, he goes back, I go d4, and this resembles uh, more or less classical French defense, with the exception that my bishop is here, and some might say it's staring into my own pawns, it's not effective, but actually it is. It is an interesting piece, and uh, you will see further in the game how it pray played an important role. So at the time, I just want to build a strong pawn center, I go I want to go f4 and uh, protect this pawn pyramid, maybe even go g3, and then uh, this pyramid will be like uh, finished till the end, very beautiful formation. Um, and I also want to finish my development, castle my king, let's see if I can do this. So he, he puts more pressure on my center, I develop my bishop, uh, I take, he gives a check, I block, he castles, and here I go f4 to protect my pawn formation. This is very pleasant, a very pleasant uh, advantage, space advantage for white, but the only problem I have is I'm still not castled, I'm still not enough developed, not developed enough, so he tries to exploit it, he goes f6, immediately blowing open the center, which is logical, and I protect with knight g to f3, and he goes g5. Here, after some thought, he goes g5, and I'm like, uh, is he crazy? This is, this is a bad move. Here's the computer evaluation. The computer evaluation is plus 0 0.72, so already, before g5, it was uh, approximately equal. Let's, let me show you. It was approximately equal, 0 0.3. And then g5, and the evaluation bar jumps up. Because it's, it's a bad move, it cannot be a nice move. It's uh, moving a pawn in front of your king, I'm not even castled here, I, I don't have uh, 
I, I'm not obliged to castle this way. Maybe I, I won't. And uh, he tries to launch a cr cruel and crazy attack. But uh, the thing is, I have to calculate lots of variations here. I was calculating a3. I was calculating in this position. E takes f6 as a candidate move. I was calculating in this position. F takes g5. I was calculating, just castling, ignoring him. And I and I just couldn't make a move. I couldn't decide. I, I, I was like uh, stupefied by his move. So this worked to some extent. Uh, I didn't like taking here but because I thought, uh, first of all, he has g4 with some crazy attack. And maybe later he'll take on f6 with his queen and try to check me over here. But also, I thought he has this, g takes f4, which is the computer choice. And the position is uh, messy. It's... Uh, it's a three-result game, as they say. So you know, later on, uh, he will take uh, this by with his queen and uh, maybe with his knight. And uh, it's uh, it's not something I liked. So I decided, why not take the g-pawn, which is more logical. And here, I calculated lots of variations. I thought he'll probably take here, because this is the idea. Uh, the idea of the move g5 is to destroy my pawn center if I take here. This pawn no longer defends this, so he takes here. But still, I have enough defenses of the e5 square, so I take with my pawn, and my bishop becomes more active, and my knight defends this pawn, and I was calculating here for quite a long time this sacrifice. Rook takes f3. I thought it's an interesting sacrifice, but I decided that it's uh, not that dangerous for me. So I calculated that I probably should take with my queen, but then he takes here with check. I lose my castling right, and I lose this pawn. But still, I'm not in much danger. I can block like this, for example, or I can run like this. So both moves are playable, and the computer gives uh, some advantage for white, 1.4. So it's a little bit scary, because he can take and attack both my queen and my bishop, and he has a strong center. But my bishops, uh, especially this one, becomes uh, very, very dangerous. So so that's uh, that's an okay variation for, for me. And I was calculating this, and I also was calculating what if he takes, I take, and then he takes queen g5 first, attacking my knight. And also, this idea is still in force. And I didn't know what to do. Probably I would have castled here. Uh, that's logical. And then after this, I can retreat somewhere, but I didn't know where I should retreat. Probably this one is the best move. And he takes, I take. I was calculating something like this, and I spent l a lot of time, really, at this point. And he, surprisingly for me, after d takes e4, he didn't take the knight. He didn't sacrifice. He just went queen b6, which is a great move, actually. much A much better move, according to the computer. Another great candidate move was knight c5. But he, he, he went queen b6, which is the second line of the computer. And I realized that, uh, well, he's not obliged to sacrifice the exchange here, but he can just put pressure on me. Maybe uh, infiltrate here, maybe infiltrate like like this, maybe in, uh, go jump uh, in with the knight. And I don't have uh, the castling right, because this queen is preventing this. And uh, I realized that this is a very double-edged position. The computer still gives some advantage for white. Let's hide the evaluation, so, so as not to spoil anything. But uh, still, it's, uh, it's unpleasant a little bit. I, I'm not castled. This is a problem. OK, I still finish my development. I go queen 2. Um, he goes bishop c5, trying to plant his bishop maybe here. I go a3, preventing this uh, maneuver by the knight. He goes here. And here I decided to start an attack, start uh, my own play. Of course, I could have castled. This was the most logical move for me, but I didn't like d4. I didn't like d4 here, and I didn't like the fact that I cannot jump in with my knight to this or this square because of this pin, and I have to spend time moving my king. It's still better for me here, but I didn't want to give him that. So I decided, okay, he can play d4. Uh, I'll just go h4, and here, if he plays d4, then I can jump in and... I'm totally winning, so this is a, a great position. So uh, I'm just waiting. What is this bishop doing? Okay, it's a menace. Uh, it looks scary, but it doesn't do anything. So here he goes, bishop h f4. Very interesting maneuver. So uh, remember this bishop, this bishop's journey to b4 first, then to c5, then to e3, then to f4. Uh, everybody is taught when he or she starts playing chess that you should not move the same piece 
as many times uh, in the opening, and still those two pieces pieces are not developed by Black. So maybe this is not the right approach, moving the bishop so many times. But the computer says this is the strongest move. The threat is bishop g3 check, and I lose castling right. So here. I decide to prevent this. I go rook h3. Also, this might help in future to uh, protect this uh, third rank. And also in future, maybe I castle, maybe I add some pressure with the second rook, and I go here, 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 and destroy him. That's, that's some of my ideas. So here, he surprisingly checks. So remember this um, <laughs> bishop's journey again. It went here, 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 and then it died here. Why did he take? The idea is, if I take with a knight, my rook is no longer on this square, it has moved here, so it does not protect this square, so he can check me here, and I have the only move here, and the position is complicated, maybe he can go knight d4, for example, he's still attacking me, I'm still a little bit better, but this is a scary position to play with white. So I didn't like taking with my knight, leaving uh, this square unattended, because at the moment, at the time being, the knight defends this. I also could have taken with the queen, but then he has this knight d takes e5 move, because this queen was protecting this pawn jointly with this bishop, and now he can take, and uh, I don't have enough uh, defending pieces. I can take, yes, but he has this check, and I'm checkmated. This, 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 check, discover, check. And this, this is checkmate, checkmate in four. So uh, that would be a stupid way to blunder the game. So um, if I take with a queen, I lose this pawn, and I don't like it. So what I do? I take with a king. This is not maybe the most uh, pleasant move to make, but uh, I'm developing my king. <laughs> I'm trying to run away from all these checks, and also I'm trying to uh, add the rook to, to the attack, but he finds a strong move, knight c5, and now I'm at a dilemma. What should I do? This is threatened. This is not only just a pawn that is threatened two times already, but uh, this will be a fork, and I will lose my rook for the knight. I will lose an exchange. Thankfully, I calculated something which was correct at this point, and I sacrificed this rook. I went before. I decided to sacrifice the rook. He took it, and this is the position. Actually, the computer says that uh, I'm uh, a little bit better. Here you can see the evaluation once again. 0.68, so black has, uh, white has some advantage. Why am I better? Because I have uh, the two bishops advantage. Both bishops are quite strong. I have an attack. I will go here, maybe, or I will move my knight away and put my queen here and will try to checkmate him. And also, all my pieces are out. All my pieces are activated, whereas his rook and his bishop are not playing any role in the game. And his king is naked here. I will destroy him, maybe. Maybe not, if he plays correctly. So let's see. We are both in time trouble already. He goes a5, he tries to destroy me over here, because if if we, let's say, if I give him some time, move like this, he takes, and I cannot even take because uh, the rook joins the game, and it's already a very crazy position. I, I don't have I don't have the luxury of time to, to move back and forth. I have to prevent his counterplay on this uh, flank, so I go b5. He has to retreat with his knight, and now I go knight d4, and my position is just beautiful. I really liked it at the time. Yes, I'm uh, down one pawn official, officially, so I have one bishop and one pawn for a rook. But uh, this rook, uh, don't kid me, it's not a rook, it's like a passive spectator. So my um, knight is on this beautiful square here, preventing his knight from going here. Um, my bishop is protecting my knight and this pawn, this bishop is eyeing this square, this queen will jump in here. This attack is uh, very powerful, and yes, my king is also not uh, feeling too safe right now, but uh, all the access points are blocked at this point, so the rook cannot infiltrate. This is protected, this is protected. This uh, line is blocked, this line is blocked, so he cannot infiltrate. All these squares are protected by my pieces, so he cannot jump in with his pieces. So he has to spend some time with counterattack, uh, starting his counterattack, and my attack is already raging on. So he went bishop d7 trying to activate his pieces, but I'm already I'm faster. I'm uh, threatening checkmate in one. So he tried to block, and here I found a clever move, g6. And here I'm already winning. 
So of course I could have taken here, but this is not well. well I could not have taken here because he has queen g1 check, and suddenly I'm lost. Uh, I could have taken with my uh, bishop, but then he would have taken with his rook, sacrificing the rook. And if I take again, he has queen g1 and. Black is attacking me. Uh, the computer evaluation is that black is better. So this is some crazy stuff. After uh, knight f5, the best move and the only winning move is g6. I'm not paying attention to this because I'm again threatening mate in one. And if he takes here, I will just checkmate him because if he goes here, for example, I go check and check and he has to take the rook and then he's checkmated or he can block, but he is checkmated as well here. Ch check and checkmate. My bishop is very important here. So uh, he has uh, no time taking this uh, g6 pawn. Once I move it to g6, his only move is h6. Trying desperately to hold on for dear life with his knight protecting this pawn. But I just take this knight with my bishop. Again, not with my knight, because that would have opened up checks for this queen but I take with my bishop, and once he takes with his rook, trying again to uh, make me take with my knight and allow him checks. I don't take his rook, it's not important. I take his pawn. And uh, now I'm threatening this, and uh, his position collapses. He gives me a check, I move up a little bit, and his rook is attacked, and checkmate is threatened, so he moves the rook back, he has to sacrifice the rook. I take it, I check him. And here he gave up, he resigned, because next move is checkmate. This and this. So I have defeated a Soviet candidate master, and as you might have heard, Soviet candidate masters are very strong, very powerful. I'm uh, happy about this game in the tournament. Stay tuned, uh, check out my other videos on my recent tournament games, and uh, on my games against the top grandmasters from uh, the world's elite, Fabian Caruana, Jan Nepomnishi, Levon Ronian, etc., etc. See you in the next video.